Hello, welcome to another Bedroom Guru with me, Nikki Allen. Um, we ended our last video on the excitement of um, heaven, reality layer, um, and I want to continue from that. When I've gone up to the reality layer or heaven, um, I've always seen various people, families, or congregating in their areas some I've seen um, where they've created their own little close so all the family live next to each other um, it really is something that is most probably too good to believe um, with us down here because you know I bet the skeptical people will look at this and think yeah right okay you've got a really good imagination but it's been proven to me so many times um, as an example I remember doing a reading um, for this lovely girl and her granddad had only passed the day before and he came through and what happens is sometimes is is that um, if a if a spirit person wants me to say exactly their own words they start an auto cue in my mind and I just read what's coming up on the auto cue I'll be a great tv presenter um, so what happened was I'm going to change the names to respect my client's privacy obviously um, but what happened was is that the auto cue started going past because um, one of the questions I said, are you all right? You know, what's happened as soon as you got up there? And he basically said, as I said, I'm going to change the names. Jane, I've just come up. I've woken up. I don't know what happened while I was asleep, but I feel brilliant. I'm here with Nanny Dolly and Barney the dog. And we're sitting on the bench that we used to have, that we used to sit on down here. All the hollyhocks and foxgloves are here. Nana's done a great job of putting everything in place. We've got our perfect country garden and our perfect cottage. And she just went, oh, my God. And he literally just rolled off the tongue. He'd already said what his name was anyway. And she said, that's his wife. That's like Nanny Dolly. And that's their dog, Barney, their last dog that they loved. Like it was, um, I can't remember the breed of it now, but it's like it got to a really good old age, like 15 or something. And she goes, and they always used to sit on the bench um, in their garden, and it was all like foxgloves and hollyhocks. And they always said that they'd always want a really pretty cottage to match it. And the fact that, you know, it wasn't obviously Dolly, I can't remember their names, quite an unusual name, but he rolled off the tongue the names of who he was with straight away without me... You know, you'd always know a dodgy medium because they'll go, oh, is it John, Arthur, Ben, Ru and they'll keep fishing around for a name. But he just rolled it off the tongue where he was and described exactly what he used to do with um, Nan and that they were in their garden. And he said that, you know, she'd been working very hard. And I've heard this a lot where spouses and soulmates prepare, you know, the pad ready for their partner to come up. And it's normally in answer to all their dreams I think I've said before you know you you have people just sailing on a yacht and I say he's on a yacht and he goes oh my god he's always on a yacht or you know um he was driving this beautiful car sports car in the um in Italy it was she goes oh god we always said that we were going to get do you know like that advert the Cadbury's advert where um it's oh, I can't remember their bloody Hollywood names where he gets in the open top car and they drive off the Cadbury's advert must be Catherine Hepburn, I think. I don't know. And um, Tony Curtis, possibly. I don't know. And um, basically, he was doing that. She's like, God, we never got to do it, you know. So you can live out whatever you want there. However, after you've, like, you know, kind of connected with all the people that you've grieved for and missed so much on the earth plane, um, you go up there and it's, it is like a utopia. And sometimes, some of the people, especially like the teenagers at the bar staff, go and get a bit bored actually. So I think so perfect. So they take up um, various jobs. You know, like a lot of um, teenagers, especially if they have had traumatic passings or even taken themselves over, they'll go and help teenagers, you know, um, when they come over. And babies, they'll be there for other babies, you know. Um, some of them might keep them company while they're passing. So, you know, you can do all sorts of jobs up there. Um, some of them I've heard of, like, midwives that have gone over that want to, you know, help get the baby used to coming over here and things like that. So, you know, it's also... I remember when I first had my dream about my um, book, Earthwalkers, which is where all this is explained, the whole map of heaven in there, in the story. And... Um, 
I was getting all these really random words coming out, thinking, God, this is like really good stuff. It's like really long words. And some of the words I didn't even know, they just come into my head. And I realised that I was getting an autocue of what to write sometimes. And it had been channeled from a different source, a bit like, you know, when I speak with spirit people. And I thought, bloody hell, someone's helping me. So I sat with my friends and said, well, I'm going to go into trance. It might not work, you know, because my energy's not great. I said, but, you know, let's have a little go and see if... Um, I can find out who's working with me because I'm telling you, I just, I literally am writing what they're saying half the time. So I can't really take credit for that book. I shouldn't say that, should I? So um, anyway, it did happen. And Julianus, one of my guides came through and I don't, don't remember any of it. But when I came out of it, they went, oh my God. They said, he said, Elizabeth Bowen is helping you. And I didn't have a clue who she was. So we Googled her and it turned out that she was a very successful or famous supernatural novelist in Victorian times. And what's even more peculiar is, is I've always liked rustic contemporary type of furniture. Um, but suddenly I was obsessed with like the Victorian era, like the late 1800s. And if you like, you, you've seen in my bedroom, when I'm down in the bedroom, it's either here or, or the bedroom where everything is like vintage it's all victorian vintage shabby chic and it's just and i've never liked that kind of stuff and i just think she's brought an influence down um you know and and get, and passed on perhaps some of her passions or her likes however i've heard it so many times you know i've just recently done a magazine article um where there's a really really um famous musician and she's sure that she's been um, looked over by another very famous musician who passed over and I'm like my god yeah so sometimes the passions that you hold up there you'll come and assist other people aspiring to do that and I've heard that a lot you know where they come down and writers will help writers famous writers from the past like Elizabeth Bone is helping me um, and even I even remember listening to one of the Leslie Flint um, live se seance sessions where Amy um Oh, for goodness sake, I've forgotten her name. Johnson, you know, the famous um, female flyer during World War Two, And she said, oh, yes, I love coming down now and then just to um, help some pilots on their way. It gives me something to do. So I do think that, and I do know actually, that a lot of people that have got certain attributes um, in the human experience will continue to relay those to people down here. I honestly, I honestly believe that. We'll know it, actually. Um, and so I always know Elizabeth Bowen's here because I feel like I've got this auto cue running through my head and um I then write whatever I need to write and I'm so grateful for it and you know when I googled her and saw her face and saw information I just couldn't believe it because I just knew her face it's just really weird um so perhaps we do have guardian angels um that come in to help us with specific you know needs on the earth um for our work or our talents you know I mind Van Gogh coming down though that'd be nice wouldn't it start painting a few of them and knocking them out <laughs> But anyway, so after a while, we kind of kick our heels because we're used to the reality. We're doing our thing. Um, and so obviously when I've gone up there, I want to ask the questions that humanity would ask if they were standing in front of God. And I've got the answers, um, which I'll be giving in the next few videos. What I will do is take you first to the reality layer um, because it kind of goes hand in hand with the, um, sorry, the halls of learning. It goes hand in hand with the reality layer. Um, because after a while, I used to go up there and say, well, you know, what do we do? And they said, well, after three human generations, we come back down. And I will do a complete separate video on reincarnation because that is mind blowing. So I'm like, right, OK. So I said, and I kept asking these questions. And in the end, whoever was talking to me, I think it was an angelic voice because they're very powerful and very, um, not curt, but very, you know, black and white. They say the thing, they said, um, remember, remember your journey and I remember years and years ago right I used to have this meditation with Carl my healing guide and we, he used to walk me along this rocky road with with a sea either side of it and I used to think oh Christ not this again and I used to walk and cut my feet fall over on the rocks and he'd pick me up again and then I'd come out of the meditation it was to my head in it went on for nearly a year where I couldn't get past this stupid bloody rocky road thing it was like a key you know or a I don't know, just or like the breakwater in Brixham where I'm moving to. Um, it was just like this, you know, lumps of rocks in the middle of the sea. And it, I kept walking and walking. Eventually, 
eventually thank the heavens i don't know if it was due to me being upgraded or learning more or getting a more higher vibration a deeper sense of consciousness to understand that layer but i ended up um at these massive doors and um calm stood there smiling and then my granddad um fred who's like you know the paternal side is the stronger side of our spiritual generations kissed my forehead and goes well done lovey well done go on in you go and so these gates opened and I walked into this huge hall and it was black and white checkered flooring. And I found out from a Freemason that this was relevant, but he wouldn't tell me anymore. So if any Freemasons watching, you might understand this. It was a huge hall with this checkered flooring and either side of me on these walls that just went up to affinity. I couldn't see the top of them. There were all these names um, like engraved in blast, brass plaques. I assume it was brass, could be gold. And um, I thought, right, take a note, take a note of one of them so you can Google who it is. And the one that came up was Harold Truman. And I know I'm not great with um, public figures from the past. And I'm embarrassed to say I didn't have a clue who Harold Truman was. But I thought, right, Google that after this meditation because this is, you know, give you your proof. So as I walked along, I then walked past a huge statue, massive statue. And it was two human figures entwined into one. And it was like pewter, I suppose you can describe it. I don't know, some sort of metal like that. And it was colossal. Didn't have a clue what that was there for either. And then as I walked along, someone in my consciousness said to the left are the guide layers. So to the left of this huge hall, there was a doorway, which I think is where all the spirit guides are. And so I walked up to this next set of doors and then there was three taps on the door and I don't know if I did it or someone else did it and the door started to open and I looked in right and there was this office, there was a bloke with half moon glasses and he looked up and goes oh come in and so when I walked in it was all like mahogany panelled walling with this huge huge desk that this man was sitting at and it was quite a long walk up to it and um, I sat on this chair and he said welcome you're now welcome here and you're ready to sign and do you know what I'm not gonna lie I saw this huge giant book and it had a Kashik record written on it right which I've never heard of in my life and it was a huge like looked like leather bound and all of the outside of the leaves of the paper were like gilt like gold leaf in it and he opened it up and turned it around to me and I swear to you I thought oh my god I've got this all wrong I'm signing my soul away this it really is like the devil and I started getting all panicky in this bloody meditation like a nutter and um I think it was my granddad said don't be so stupid in my head and he said take the pen and sign and he was smiling he had such a beautiful face I didn't have a clue who he was, was either right this when it happened I just had no clue about any of it and so he gave me this fountain pen. And when I looked down, it was really weird, right? Because all the entries before me were in this really weird symbol writing. I didn't have a clue what it was. And sometimes they were moving, re reassigning themselves. And I thought, what the hell is this? I've not got a clue what it is. And then he goes, sign it, Nicola. And so I signed it, but it came out in these weird writing, these weird symbols. I just didn't get it at all. And then after I'd finished signing, whatever the hell I was signing, um, he then said, you're now welcome. And so I went, all right, okay, but I didn't even know what the bloody hell I was welcome to. And so he then closed his book. And as he closed his book, I found myself out of a side door. And my granddad was there and he goes, oh, my, I'm so excited. Come with me, come with me. You'll be able to do this like all of us have had before you. And so he walked up to this pole and what I now know, the fountain of youth, and he said, you can view any soul now that you've signed that book. And so he says, have a go. And I, and he said, all you do is you just put your fingers through the pole. And he said, and think of who you want to think of. And you'll be able to know their path and what how they connect with you. He said, but don't abuse it. And do you know what? I've only done it twice in the whole of the time I've been aware of doing it. And at the time, my best friend, I thought, I'll think of her, see what's coming up for her. And there was a massive cross um, over her face and then a big line between the two of us. And I thought, well, that ain't right. You know, we're never going to be split apart, never. Um, so I was a bit 
sceptical on that and a bit doubtful. And anyway, I came away from the pool and he kissed my head. He said, I'm so proud. Now go back because you need your energy. And when I went back, I'd been out for about two hours and I'm so excited that I want to go back up there. And so when I went up and saw the reality layer in the mind map they've created of heaven, when you come out under the arch, if you go to the left, there's another archway, which is just full of like bougainvillea, like arcane angel aerial, all of her work, um, you know, with the animals, the dragonflies. And I knew that I was on the side corner of the celestial garden. And so when I walked in there, I basically said, um, I really want to know more about soul progression. I really want to know about this. And before I tell you the next bit, what happened was about a year later, my friend Ian Smith, he runs the spiritguides.co.uk. He's a lovely, lovely man. I've known him for many years. And he knows a lot about spiritual philosophy. And at that time, I was very green. I'm not going to lie. But I'm glad I was because it backed it up, if you know what I mean. And I decided to start writing um, Heaven Calling back then. Um, and it was going to get published. But then I had my accident, blah, blah, blah. And... I said, and I was, and I was writing this experience about seeing this old boy in his office, right? And I said, Ian, I said, have you ever heard of that, the word Kashik? He went, <laughs> and I went, what are you laughing at? He goes, what, you don't know about the Kashik records? I went, no. And then he said, um, okay. And then I asked him about the fountain and the holes. He went, oh my God. He said, you've gone in and you've signed the Kashik records, the book of souls. And he said, the scribe is Metatron who who gave you the book to sign and he said and what you signed it in is Aramaic and I'm like right okay and then he said about the pond and he said that's the fountain of youth he goes just go in there again he goes for god's sake you've been allowed to go in there go and go in there and learn more so you can tell people and I felt so stupid and when I obviously googled Harold Truman um it turns out it's one of the, like the you know the presidents of America and what I found out about all of those signs is people that have made significance um, and difference in educating people about universal energies and about humanity. So everybody that's kind of, you know, made a change in educating us, I hope mine goes up there, I'd be well guided to visit. Um, they're basically written on the side of this panelling. And then when I, because I don't ever Google or read anything before it's shown to me and they tell me to do it. So I thought, bloody hell. And I started reading accounts of people that have been to the halls of the learning with the fountain and everything. And I found out that the statue, um, and this was from another meditation with Elizabeth Bowen when I was writing my book out. And um, basically the statue is the Adam and the Eve. And basically, the omnipresence, God, the souls, decided for the first time ever to put souls and consciousness into human form. So when we look at like the Neanderthals and all of the, the forms of humans before we were actually, um, you know, as we are now, they didn't have souls. They just had animal instincts to fight, hunt, procreate and survive. They didn't have that consciousness. So the first time that um, the omnipresence allowed consciousness to connect from that source of the universe, which have done on many other planets, two humans was the Adam and the Eve. And I'm like, oh my God, so that's what, you know, the beginning of humans like. So I'm totally up for the Darwin's theory. So I used to get confused with it all. And um, that is why there's a picture of the Adam, or uh, sorry, a statue of the Adam and the Eve in the Halls of Learning, because they were the first human souls, um, first humans to carry consciousness and souls. Isn't that amazing? I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. So anyway, um, with all of this stuff that I'd found out about I walked through from the reality layer into the halls of learning but it was weird because it wasn't like the big gates I think that was an imagery to show the importance of me going in signing the Akashic records because just as another adage it turned out that that best friend ended up um not being too pleasant and creating lots of pain for me and I and I'm um, totally estranged so it's totally right and the other one the other time I did it was um for looking up for my uncle Ron to see where he was and then they described to me and showed his soul progression and that's how I then learned about soul progression and what happens straight after we die you know so it was all tying in so anyway I went up there and I went into um, Metatron's office again and it was him 
And what happens is, is he changes his image for people. So he, he prefers to create the image of like an old headmaster in the office to make you feel better as a human when he's talking to you. But when he's actually out of that, he also oversees children, um, indigo children, and does lots lots of other things. And then you see him as a really strong, young, vibrant angel uh, imagery. Not with all the wings and that, but just a really strong, you know, muscular, giant angel. And But in there, he's like this really kindly man, a bit like Father Christmas. And so I said, I'm really sorry to bother you. He goes, don't ever apologise for um, coming into my consciousness. What can I help you with? And I said, what is the meaning of life? What is it all about? So he smiled and he did this. And Julianus came in, my soul guide, who's like with me the whole time I'm down on the earth plane. And he said, I'm going to do it as simple as I can so you can tell humanity in its simplest form. So basically what happens is, is that we connect in a soul cluster. Uh, so we have got, just imagine like we're a ball of energy. This is the best way to do it right. And in that are all these souls. And all of those souls are the people that connect in your cluster, your soul family. That soul family stay c connected through every incarnation. So your sister could be your brother next time round. Your mum could be your daughter Right, you decide what happens. So your soul cluster is in the reality layer. Three generations have gone past so nobody like physically misses you or knows you. And then basically you'll go, oh, I'm a bit bored. Let's go to the halls of learning and ask for another incarnation. So basically you go into the halls of learning, you rock up with your soul guide who sits in front of Metatron. This is very simplistic because if I give you the full one, you're just going to get bored and lose the plot on it, right? Like I did. It took me a long time to work this out very simply, okay? So you go in front of Metatron and say, right, we want to go down. One, there's part of us that sometimes, and this very much um, adheres to the Hare Krishna type of um, belief systems where you have some desires that you still want to play out as a human experience. Some just want to ascend their souls and learn more about humanity. Some want to go down to continue doing what I'm doing, teaching humanity and letting them know what's actually, you know, going to come after physical death. Um, and some just want to go down there because they love it. And you know what? Because we know that the that when we're up there, right, that human life, one human life, is a speck of salt in an ocean of eternity. We have a sick sense of humour. So we go, I know, why don't we? Why don't I die there so I can come back up? Because I don't really want to do a full life. Then you go into depression and then we'll bring Sam in to come and help you. And then by meeting him, you'll then meet that person. Then you'll get on your spiritual path and then you can tell everybody about it. You know, because we know it's only a tiny little existence. We have all, we set up all these bloody, you know, exciting challenges and God knows what. Because we're up there and we're totally whole and pure and great. The problem is, is that when we get down here, we forget that. And then we think life is just completely shite. And that why have I got all this happening to me? The older your soul is, the harder you will, ch you will um, create challenges for your life path. I'm telling you, I know it sounds really weird, but it's true. The younger souls, the younger soul clusters um, that are formed from light and energy... They're the sort of ones that live forever, you know, that maim and hurt people and perhaps win the lottery and they're robbers, right? Because they're just, they've got an easy life. The people that just seem to get everything come to them and they've done nothing, they're the ones that have got an easy life and they're younger souls that just want to come down and carry on enjoying the fruits of materialism. However, the older souls realise that that's absolute crap, you know? Materialism, money and everything to do with the earth plane is just a complete myth. It's something that's not important, but it is when we're down here. But up there, we don't care. Yeah, go on, lose your house. That'd be great, like I did. I was homeless. Yeah, go on, that'd be a good one. And then you can come back and show everybody how to get over, you know, um, depression and how to get over complete loss of material stuff and how you cope being in this, you know, horrific condition for six years. I, I chose that. So what you do is you all decide what you're going to do and then your soul guide and you in front of Metatron write what you're going to do in the Akashic Records, like for your soul cluster. And then... Um, the soul guide basically says, right, this is the blueprint. This is what's going to happen. You're going to do this. Your next landmark is when you get married. Your next landmark is when your mum dies. Your next landmark is when your brother-in-law kills himself or whatever, right? And and basically, they're the landmarks, right? So it's a bit like how my dad described it. It's like an underground station. You've got to get from here to here, but you choose what stations to go through. You can either choose the direct line 
or you can meander around and, and waste time getting to the next landmark. So you can either have a swift journey. So for instance, just say if you've lost your job and you decide to just be depressed and start drinking and stop being horrible and then you might muck about. And then your soul guide's thinking, oh my God, this weren't supposed to happen. He's got really, um, really like heavy with his human energy. So he's bugging, buggering it up a bit. So he's taking the scenic route. Whereas if he'd just got hold of himself dealt with the fact that he may have a disease or an addiction. I thought, right, I need to push through, I need to go out to AA, I need to say sorry to my family, I need to find another job. Then he's going to get to that next landmark quicker. So you can choose the misery on how long you go. People are offered opportunities, and that opportunity is your soul guide saying, look, that's your landmark to take that, because then you're going to meet that person that's going to help you. If you don't take that opportunity through fear or um, you know, lack of self-worth, Again, you're taking the scenic route to get there, so you have more of a miserable life. Does that make sense? Um, so I now grasp change really quickly because I know um, and when opportunities come, I take them. I feel them. If they're right for me, I go for it without any fear. Last September, I sat up and I thought, this is wrong. This house is beautiful, but I'm remote. I'm, I haven't got proper um, you know, family and friend network. I need to be around people. I need to move. I've only been here two years. And I know that I'm not well enough to physically do it, but I know that everybody will be around me to do it and help me. And I know that I need to be somewhere else. So just put the house up for sale. And I pulled three angel cards. They all um, referred to change, moving house, new start. And I went, right. So I put it up just because of this idea and three angel cards. And now I'm moving to Brixham, where I want to go, be by the sea. So, you know, I act on all of the thoughts and feelings and opportunities that come my way. If they go wrong, that's fine. But the whole point is, it's about movement and moving forward. And so if you totally go off it like I was, um, this is what's been explained to me by Julianus. He basically said, you had the wrong people around you. You're in the wrong relationship. You had the wrong friends around you and he said and you were we wanted you to teach and educate more and you were ter being turned into someone that was just a uh, giving out readings machine all over the world you know and they said we didn't want that and, it, and you weren't listening to the signs you were too busy you were too bogged down with material needs paying staff arranging tours you know and and so they didn't give me the accident as a punishment but I had already said in my previous time up there I'm going wrong here you need to do something to bring me back and, and get me whole because I, it looks like I haven't dealt with any of my trauma from my childhood and I don't want to end up having that scenic route of just having an unhappy life down there I do want to try and you know do what I'm supposed to set out to do so give me the accident and that's what I've done and so I had the accident and now as you keep hearing you know I found this sense of clarity and peace and serenity and, and knowing and I'm, you know, most content I've ever been, even though my body's bloody useless and my mind sometimes. So that's what they do. They basically do your life plan. And then certain people, have you ever met the people that come in who you absolutely love and want to be with all the time and they feel like you've known them forever? That is someone that's part of your soul cluster that was supposed to come into your life. And lots of people, you know, they get confused. I've had so many people say, my God, you know, I'm married with kids, but I've met this girl. Um... You know, and I love her. I'm just obsessed with her. And I just, and I think, and she goes, I don't know if I'm gay. I don't know if I'm this. I'm that's just soulmate. I said, just love and honour them for who they are. And, um, and men do it as well. They've come in and said, oh my God, you know, I'm having serious issues about my, you know, um, sexual origin. I don't know if I'm gay or straight or bi. And it's like, darling, it's a soulmate. You know, so it can really muck you up because you become obsessed with them. Some of your soulmates may come here and really upset you or muck you about. But that's, again, part of your sixth sense of humour of what you planned when you was up there. Um, so people come in for a reason. Celestine, um, the Celestine prophecy. Is it prophecy? Don't sound right. Celestine prophecies. I think it is. Sorry. Bloody head's rubbish. Um describe it very well it's hard reading but it's very much what I'm trying to get across to you now see this is the thing people make it so difficult and use such large words and write about it so in a complex way I want to try and give it to you as like human to human about what it's all about um so you do your life plan you basically adhere to that you're all, you're all allotted times when you go up I'm telling you that now um, you'll say, right, I'm going to go at 82, I'm going to go at this time, I'm going to go at that time. So you you all go up when you're supposed to go up. You know, I remember 
I remember this being one of the for instances because I remember this um, bloke whose brother had gone through the worst road accident of his life and walked out without a scratch and then his mum had died from a tiny fractured bone in her ankle. She just her ankle turned over on a tiny little step in her house and she was dead a few days later and I think what it was was that the bone had pierced um, a blood vein, um, a, a, a artery sorry, but it was bleeding internally and she just thought it was a sprain and left it and then I think a clot formed or something and killed her, you know. So that's obviously how she wanted to go and what she planned to do. With suicides, um, mostly they are, I'm going to like, I want the experience of knowing what it's like to take myself over that way. Um, and some are planned. The ones that aren't will, can delay the soul cluster ascension of going forward. Um, so you may, they may have to um, learn about why they've um, come back early. You know, they may have to go into another level of consciousness to understand that they've, they've breached their kind of life plan. Most of the time, though, with that, I've heard so many stories, quite a lot of people have, and I'm very humble to have had them shared with me, where people have said, um, well, oh, there's one that's just popped straight into my head. I was just about to do a show in Kent, and this man come up to me, and he was real big, roughy tufty leather-clad bloke, you know, with, with tattoos and everything. And he came up to me, and I, honestly, sorry if you're going to listen to this, you recognise who you are, I thought he was going to come and say, do you know what? You mediums are like, well, shit, I thought it was going to be one of them. Do you know what I mean? So I'm like, pay yourself. And I thought, I don't need this grief. I'm just about to go on stage. And um, he came up to me and goes, I need to say something to you. And I, please don't think I'm mad. I said, darling, everybody says that to me. I don't think anybody's mad because we are so stupid in judging people when there is limitless stuff to learn about the universe and, and you know, everything about it and the human consciousness. And he said, I was going to kill myself. I'd lost my job. I'd broken up with my wife. Um, I couldn't see the kids. I had nothing. I was in a hostel and I'd had enough and I was really depressed. And he said, and I walked to, I found the highest building in London. I thought, that's the one I'm jumping off of. He said, I was I'd was. i written my suicide notes back at the hostel. And he said, and I basically walked just about to open the door to find out how to get up to the, you know, the top. And this man, and I, for some reason, I turned around and this man was smiling at me across the road. He was really tall, huge, blonde hair. I thought, I'm recognising this sort of person. And he said, then suddenly, I blinked and he was in front of me and he said, you really don't want to be doing that, do you? And he said, the next thing I know, I was back in my hostel and woke up. And all I could see was this man with blue eyes saying to me, you don't want to be doing this, do you? And he said, and Christ knows what happened to me. He said, but I woke up and thought, right, I'm going to start sorting my crap out. And he did. And now he's remarried with, with beautiful lady, lovely home, great job. And he swears it was an angel that come and said to him, you don't want to be doing that. I've heard it so many times when people were just about to kill themselves. And um, when I asked about this on another visit up to the Halls of Learning, because I've been there so many times now, you can imagine, um, they said that sometimes you get soul walk-ins because if the if that life is going to be taken, it's going to muck up a chain of events for the rest of the soul cluster, and it's like really critical. So sometimes what they do, they either think that an angel interaction like that man was enough to stop him from doing it, or they will actually swap the soul over for another soul cluster soul. And I've heard that as well, where someone was literally walking home with bags of paracetamol. Um, and they were going to kill themselves, walked in. Um, sorry, they didn't walk in. They were just across the road at the crossing, carrying these bags full with a bin round to every single um, pharmacy um, to get all of the painkillers and the drugs and that to kill themselves. And then they thought they were being mugged and something whooped up behind them. And the next thing they knew, they woke up the following morning wondering what the hell there was two carry bags full of drugs doing in the room and then carried on their lives like they couldn't remember anything. And then through meditation and remembering what happened, they were shown it so they could tell other people about it. So, you know, there are critical moments where they think, oh my God, if they kill themselves, we're buggered. Because you do, you have, I think I've spoke about this before with the line in the mouse with Julianus. This part is like the divine part of the soul. This is the, the, like the base chakra to the solar plexus. It's all about coping with earthbound situations, obstacles and problems. And basically, if we allow that heavy part to overtake the divine consciousness, where which I've got, which is mostly my mouse is stronger than my lion, 
That's what Julianus calls him. This is your lion, whatever his accent is, and this is your mouse. And he says, if that lion roars louder than the mouse, there's big problems. Um, and so sometimes, yeah, we just can't handle it down here. Um, I did. I wanted to go home loads of times when I was really ill before I got on my medication. Um, and because you know you're going home, your soul knows it thinks I can't be doing this. It's taking a mickey. Um, but things stop you and things change you and take you on your path. Um, and so that is why it's so important to connect in with that consciousness. Because when you're connecting in with the consciousness, with the source, it will guide you on what to do next. It's up to you if you take the scenic route or the bad route. Um, what happens is once you've all come up and had a bit of a chill out in the reality layer, you then, um, before you have, the, sorry, before you have the chill out in the reality layer, you have your life review. And then what happens after you've had a chill out is that later on, you'll then have your soul cluster life review on how everything's going. And this is where guardian angels come into it. Because sometimes if you're looking at some of your soul cluster, that are still down on the earth plane, going through your life plans that you've all done. And you think, oh my God, they've just got to sort their shit out. They need to like kick up the arse. Oh my God, I'm so common. I'm so sorry, but sod it. You know, it's not, oh, and I'm a fluffy person that sees dead people. No, I'm just a normal bleeding person. Um, that connects into a consciousness of all of this knowledge. Um, how lucky am I? Um, so the guardian angels come in. Um, they're not celestial beings, guardian angels. I know they've got the word angel in them, but they're not celestial beings. Archangels and angels are basically um, a celestial entity, if you like, or an energy that have never, ever experienced an earthbound um, experience. They've never, like, you know, been a human being. They've always remained celestial, esoteric, whatever you want to call them. Um, whereas guardian angels are going to be people like your granddad your mum your dad right so what happens is say like if i'd been rode by a bus and i was up there and my brother was like totally buggering something up i really need help was really 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 like struggling i said right i'm going to go down and act as a guardian angel i'm going to try and reach him in his dreams i'm going to try and show him signs of which way to go i'm going to like literally throw it in his face take this opportunity um and perhaps if he meditates i'll be the first one to talk to him so that's what your guardian angels are just to completely complicate it, under the archangel hierarchy, there are personal angels. And these angels are allocated as a celestial being to visit you. If your vibration is high enough to receive angel frequency, they can come in and assist you and help you through things. Um, I think her name's Mary Brown. There's an author, sorry if I got that wrong, Eileen Brown, who basically speaks of having a really severe illness and, a, and an angel coming down to help her get through back to being better I don't know where the bleeding on my one is <laughs> but um yeah so we will go into angels you know I will do there's so much to talk about with you I'm so excited about doing these they really make my day um when I'm well enough to do them um but we will t I will do a whole um session dedicated to angels but basically um that's what happens with your soul so you go you, you you come down as a soul cluster have your life experiences wait till you're all up wait a few generations come back down again um reincarnation is 100 percent real and what i'm going to do is i'm going to talk about reincarnation on the next video to explain to you the process of that um and how it was proven to me that reincarnation is 100 percent right I will also be obviously doing, I have actually been in the cavern and spoke with the omnipresence, with God. So I will be answering the questions that I asked it, him, her. It changed images all the time. I've been there. I've had a look at the core of the universe. Um, and basically, nearly everything I could possibly want to ask, every human wants to ask, I've asked it and I've got the answer little old me eh um, and I know there's most would be thousands or millions of people have done exactly the same the problem is is that with people like me people just say oh they've old crap they're just like you know frilly spooky weirdy medium talk to dead people and that's a shame however I've said it before and I'll say it again with this new transition um, which I'll describe as well in the next video from 12 12 12 
the shift of consciousness, the shift where the vow is thinner than it's ever been, so the indigo children can thrive and that, and we can understand and learn more um, because we're failing down here as a race. We're failing. We're coming down for experiences, but we're not looking after the planet, the animal kingdom, ourselves. And if we don't, be careful. We're not going to have a planet to come down on anymore and have our experiences. And that's why all of this spiritual um, surge of consciousness and awareness is happening and that is why so many highly esteemed people are getting near-death experiences um so they can come back as highly esteemed individuals you know like even alexander nurses doctors all sorts of highly esteemed people are coming back and saying i've been to heaven and people are listening because these people are normally professional highly esteemed skeptics that you know of scientists or whatever and they're coming back saying heaven's real so, you know, we're, we're starting this new phase in 2018 of education because we need to start spreading knowledge, love, education um, and some light across this world before we kill it. And that's what these videos are all about. That's why they're pushing me to do them. I know it is. And it's about, and that is what is in my, in this four book series I'm doing. It's all about this. And I'm wondering really if I should just change it to spiritual philosophy. Because I thought I'd reach more people through fiction doing it. But <clears throat> don't happen. Trying to get a fiction book out of agents is like finding a needle, not in a haystack, but in a bloody Atlantic Ocean. So I could change it spiritual philosophy. I don't know what to do with it because I've got so much knowledge and so much to share and so much to help people with and I don't know which way to go. But I do know that when the opportunity is right and the energy is right, everything will be presented to me. So it's all good. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you've got any questions, please comment below. You know, if there's anything you want me to talk about, also comment below. Please subscribe to the channel. It means a lot to me to know that I'm reaching people. And again, I always ask, share it with people that this may help. Um, but it's, it's trying to alleviate as well. People that suffer with depression, people that are finding it hard on this earth plane. It's kind of explaining a process where perhaps you might, if you understand even a bit of what I'm saying about, you'll think, do you know what? Perhaps I shouldn't take things as seriously down here. Perhaps I shouldn't worry so much about money and material aspects because it's not important, trust me. Anyway, I'll leave you with that. I hope you found it interesting and we will go into reincarnation next time and what it's all about. So thanks for listening. I really do appreciate it. And until next time, take care of yourselves um, and please leave me any comments or send me an email at my website, nickyallen.co.uk and ask me anything you want because that's what I'm here for. Take care now. Bye.